Hello guys, it's Pete from MyJuryBench.com. Today we're going to do a part one of a three-part series, which is designing this beautiful diamond pendant, as well as in part two, we'll be covering 3D printing and getting ready for casting. In part three, we'll be covering the final cast and cleaning the pendant, setting up the stones. I hope you like this video series. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are not a subscriber, consider subscribing. Patreon supporters will get all three parts this week, while YouTube subscribers will get parts one, two, and three over a 10-day uh, period. Thanks for watching, guys, and let's get started with this beautiful diamond pendant. Okay, guys, so let's start with the obvious. We know we're going to have five diamonds in a row, so let's add these diamonds. We know they're also going to be about three millimeters each, so we're going to make them approximately 3.1 millimeters each. I'm going to hit OK and insert the first diamond. Oh, set my shading here. Let's turn on screencast so that you can see where we're at. And now I'm going to look at this from the top down. And I know I have to have five diamonds in a row. So I'm going to hit Shift, D, G, and then X. And then I can move it along the X axis. I'm going to do that again until I get all five set in a row. Just about like so. Now I'm kind of eyeballing this, so forgive me. Shift D G X. Let's move that there. Shift D G X, and we'll move that one there. Okay, so there's my five stones. Looks good so far. And now I want to make the frame for the pendant. So to do that, I'm going to add in a cube. Shift A. I'm going to come out of mesh, and then a cube, and then we will again. Size this along the x-axis, s, x, and then we'll make it a little bit wider than our diamonds. I'm going to drop that down a little bit, so we're about here. S, z, I'm going to size that to, oh, we need that a little thicker. So from the top down, we want to make this a little bit thicker. S, z, I want that to be approximately here, so my diamonds are buried under the frame of the pendant. And we need to make this wider. So I'm going to hit SY so I can make that a little wider than the edge of the diamonds. Just about something like that. That gives me a good block to work with. And uh, now I want to make a cutout for the bottom because I don't want to have this as uh, one solid block. I want to actually make a cutout on the bottom or kind of hollow out the bottom a little bit. So I'm going to take my cube here, and I'm going to hit Shift D, and then press Enter, and that, that makes a duplicate copy. I'm going to bring that down just like so. I'm going to turn on invisibility mode so we can see through our model. I'm going to hit S, and then size it down about like that along the X axis. And then I'm going to hit S, Y, and size it along the Y axis so that I have this block that I can use to hollow out this particular first cube that we made. I'll show you what I mean. With the second cube selected, hold the shift key down, select the first cube, and now use the Boolean and Difference tool. And that gives us a hollow bottom on the, on the underside of the pendant. Okay, so now that I've hollowed out the bottom, so what I want to do now is um, I want to make that curve for the perimeter of the mill graining that I'm going to have on the top. And how to create a mill grain look on this particular pendant is fairly easy. What we're going to do is hit Shift A and we're going to add in a plane. I'm going to bring that plane up just a little bit, about like that. I'm going to hit top down view, so we're looking at this straight down. And I'm going to size this along the X axis. So I'm going to hit S, X, and I'm going to make this a little bit wider than my pendant itself, about like so. And then I'm going to do the same along the Y axis, and hit S and then Y, and then I'll make that a little wider than the pendant is, about like that. And that looks pretty good. And now I need to convert that to a curve. So with this plane selected, I'm going to come over to the object menu right here. I'm going to come down to convert, convert to curve from a mesh. And now we've created this mesh that is now a curve object denoted by the little circle line here, this little line object here, tells us it's a path. And I'm going to change the name of this to path. I'm also going to change the name of the cube to pendant. Okay, so now I need to add in my mill grain. And to do that, I'm going to add in a UV sphere. So I'm going to hit Shift A. 
I'm going to come down to mesh and then add in a UV sphere and then I'm going to make sure this is 32 by 32 rings and that gives us some really good looking dimensions on that and I'm also going to size this down so that it's about the size of a mill grain bead. Now that I've got that done what I want to do is I want to make this mill grain wrap around this path. To do that I select my UV sphere and I'm going to hold the shift key down and select this path that we created which is now a curve object. Come back to jewel craft and I'm going to use the distribute along curve and then it puts in a number of those there. Now I'm just going to increase these until we get to let's do this here until we get to fill in our complete parameter. Before I do that though I'm just going to move this over to here so we're about like that and then I'm going to take the uh, starting position and move that over here so it's about like that and that looks good right about there. Let's move that ending position over just a little bit and just keep increasing these until I get the, a nice clean mill grain look along the perimeter of our pendant. And then you can click off and make that permanent. So that looks pretty good just like that. I'm pretty happy with that. Before I do anything else, I'm going to take my pendant and I'm going to apply a remesh modifier to it. And let's select our pendant. We go into edit mode. You can see we have our object or our pendant, the block itself. And it's not meshed very well, but we're going to add in some detail to this. You can use a subsurf modifier, or I like to keep this particular piece square, so I'm just going to remesh it. Uh, I'll hit the modifiers tool. I'm going to go back into object mode. And I'm going to select a remesh option. I'm going to hit sharp, and I'm going to define the octree up to six, and then press apply. So I'll just a little drop down and hit apply. Now when we go into edit mode, you can see we have much more detail to our model. There's a reason I'm doing that and that's to help with our modeling later and it'll work better that way if you use the boolean union or boolean uh, difference tools you won't get any errors in your model. So now that that's selected let's first grab our sphere here. So I'm going to grab the first sphere clicking this over here in the object list. I'm going to scroll all the way down and I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the last sphere. So now I have all the spheres in my 3D viewport selected. I'm going to hold the shift key and select our pendant object and then I will use the boolean and then union tool and that will join those pieces together into one. So now I have a pendant. If we go into edit mode, select all, you can see our mill graining and our pendant are all one object. That looks pretty good to me. So what's our next step? The next step to making this pendant is to add in our cutters or the cutter, the holes for the diamonds. So to do that, I'm going to select the first diamond, hold the shift key down, select all the other diamonds, just like so. Come back to jewel craft and use the cutter tool. With the cutter tool selected, so now that I've got the cutters there and they're just the way I want them, I'm going to select the cutters by dragging across those. So now my cutters are selected. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to select the pendant. I'm going to come back to the boolean tool and I'm going to use difference. Now that applies the difference to our pendant, removes the cutouts for our diamonds. So to show you what it looks like, I will hide the diamonds and you can see we have good cutouts for our diamonds right inside that just like so. What's the next step? The next step is to add in our prongs and this is pretty easy. I want to have a shared prong. So for instance, I want to have two prongs here on this side, two prongs here in between each of the diamonds and then two at the end on this side. This is pretty easy to do. First, we're going to grab each of the diamonds. So first, select the first one, hold the shift key down, select all the other diamonds. Come over to the jewel craft tool, select prongs and you can see it puts the prongs right there, one on either side of each diamond. And what we want to do now is rotate them until we get them in a position where we're sharing. And I'm just going to look down straight down on this. And I'm going to adjust one other position, and that's the intersection. 
and I'm going to actually step those out just a little bit. And now I'm going to make the diameter of the prongs approximately one millimeter. Just like so. And then I'm going to just finish rotating them until I get them in a position that I'm happy with. Just about like that. So now they're pretty much straight up and down. And then we only have the two end diamonds to deal with. So I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to hit prong and I'm going to drop the number down here to one. I'm going to change the size to 1.0 millimeters. I'm going to move that position out just a little bit. And then I'm going to rotate that to I get it just in line with the other prongs about like so. That looks good. And then I'm going to do the same onto this. So I'm going to add in prongs. I'm going to change this to one millimeter. I'm going to change this to 25. We're going to drop this down to one prong and then I'll rotate it in position like so. So that gives me two prongs on either side of the diamonds and I'm sharing the ones in the middle. Once that's done, I can just come up here like so and then I'm going to drag and select just the prongs just like that. Now I have all the prongs selected and if I look at invisible mode here, we can see from the side view we're just a little bit short so I'm going to move those up just a little bit and then size them down along the z-axis so hit S Z and then just make them a little smaller about like so and I'm going to bring those down a little bit more right about like so and that's good just like that come back to regular mode I'm liking the way that looks so far um, I tend to make my castings with larger prongs than necessary because it's better to be able to cut them down than to not have enough prong to set your stone in. So keep that in mind. With the prong selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down, select the pendant, and I will go back to the Boolean tool and do a union. And now our pendant is one mesh, and if I go into edit mode, you can see that it looks just like so. <clears throat> Pretty happy with that. Now let's do this. We need to add in a torus and the torus is going to be used for the rings on either side of the pendant which our chain will be attached to. Remember this is going to sit in the middle of a chain. The chain will be affixed to those rings and that will allow it to swing back and forth. So to do that I'm going to add in a torus. I'm going to switch to invisible mode so we can see the torus. Shift A, mesh, and then I'm going to come up to torus. And there's our torus, a little hard to see through the other objects. You can see major segments is 48. I'm going to bring up the minor segments to 24 so that we get some finer detail. I'm also going to increase the, uh, I'm going to increase the major radius just to make it a little bigger. And I'm also going to increase the minor radius just to make it a little thicker. Just about like so. Now I'll click off of that and now our torus is modeled in the center and I'm just going to bring that up and we can see what it looks like. It's a little bit on the large size but that's not bad. Um, it'll come out okay when we print. So let's turn off the invisible mode and let's drop this back down a little bit. And I am going to do real quick because I want to make sure that this is in the same location on either side. So if we're looking straight down at this, I'm going to apply a mirror modifier to this torus. So come down to modifiers, add in a mirror modifier. We're going to modify it along the X axis. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to move it and as I move it to the right you can see it duplicates it on the left. And I'm just going to put that where I want it about like so. And then from the side view I'm going to move this down to about here. That looks pretty good. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to apply our modifier. And now we have a permanent duplication of our little rings on either side of our pendant. So with those selected, I will hold the shift key down, select my pendant, and use the union tool one more time. And now I've joined those rings to my pendant, and I have a complete model for the pendant itself. To get an idea of how that looks, I'm just going to give this a material, and then we'll just take a look at how this particular piece looks in yellow gold. I'm going to drop down my roughness or bring that back up a little bit so it looks a little better and let's take a look at this in rendered view and there you have our gold pendant 
what it's going to look like, hopefully when it's cast. Well, it won't be that smooth because we'll have some casting debris and we'll have to clean it and polish it and set the stones. But that gives you an idea what the final product should look like. That's it for part one, guys. I hope you, you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for part two because part two is going to be taking this particular model, saving it out as a, as a wavefront or an STL item, and then 3D printing it. Once we're done 3D printing, then we will uh, have this piece cast so that we know what it, the final option is going to look like. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. If you want to get a notification every time I put up a new video, make sure you hit that subscriber bell. And every time I upload a new video, which is once or twice a week, you'll get a little notification in YouTube. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.